Hey there, it's Laria. I hope everyone has been enjoying week one of Castle Nathria. This week, normal and heroic difficulties opened up. And so in this video, I wanna offer some tips and some pieces of advice that I've learned on heroic difficulty this week. I'll go over the first five fights in this video, and then next week I'll go over the last five fights in the raid. And I want to start with Shriekwing because Shriekwing is the first boss in this raid. And luckily, on normal and heroic difficulty, it's pretty easy, so I don't have really any tips other than to make sure that you have a really good DBM warning sound for when it's time to hide. Flee or die. The second fight I want to go over is Huntsman Altimore, and this is the second boss that we went to on Heroic, and this boss hurts on both Normal and Heroic. The first couple pulls on Heroic, it actually seemed almost impossible, and we also 5 healed it, and even with 5 healers, a lot of the abilities hurt a whole lot, especially the bleed dot that players get. Huntsman Altimore has an ability that targets one player, and you have to make sure that you're not standing in front of that player or near them so that you can avoid getting that dot yourself. And we killed this boss before Blizzard nerfed it. So we killed it on Tuesday, I believe either Tuesday night or sometime on Wednesday, Blizzard nerfed this ability in particular. And before that nerf, it was hitting players, or at least it was hitting me for about 14,000 damage every two seconds. And then with mitigation, it was about 10,000. So imagine our health pool is roughly 30k or so, and you're taking a little over 10,000 damage every two seconds, and that's just one player, because this dot goes out on multiple players. And if you have players who are not spread out, and they are standing near somebody or in front of somebody who is targeted with this, and then they also get that dot, you can kind of see how this ramps up a little bit. So some tips that I have to offer for this specific ability and this mechanic is to make sure that you are really focusing those players who have that dot. For me, it meant saving nature swiftness for these players. So I would put, you know, all the hots that I could on them. I had rejuve running, I had regrowth running. I was making sure that I had um, an efflorescence circle near them. And then if it got to the point towards the end of this dot and they were, I could see that they were low health and if they took another tick, and they weren't at a healthy level and they were going to die, then I would have nature swiftness to go in and save them. I was also using the exact same thing with swift mend. So I would wait until they got a little bit low, use swift mend on them. But players were also responsible for making sure that they had defensives to use, using health stones if they needed to, using immunities. We started having our hunters turtle before the dot went off so that by the time it finished casting, they wouldn't actually get the dot. So things like that, we had a paladin who would bubble it off. Just make sure that as a healer, when players have this dot, really focus on them. It can be a little bit tough. I haven't done this fight since the nerf, but at least pre-nerf, it got a little bit tricky because you were supposed to be focusing the rest of the raid and AOE raid damage and those players that had this dot. And so you were kind of trying to spot heal the rest of the raid as you were really focusing on some of those players. It got to the point where I sometimes had to cast and spam regrowth on some of those players who just either had a low health pool or for some reason just didn't have defensives or anything to use. That was the biggest thing that held us back for the first couple pulls was losing people to this ability. The next piece of advice I have for Huntsman Altimore is to be very, very careful about using Convoke the Spirits in Phase 2. Phase 2 is when you get a whole bunch of ads that spawn around the room, and the way that you deal with these ads is you are supposed to keep them CC'd or stunned or whatever you need to do at the edges of the room and do not touch them, don't DPS them or anything for roughly 30 seconds or so, because the longer they live, they start to get this uh, stacking like damaging buff. So if you wait longer, they're going to take increased damage. So what you're supposed to do is they spawn, you root them, you CC them, whatever you need to do, and then 30 seconds later you go and you kill them. The issue with Convoke the Spirits we found out is that it is 12 abilities for Rester Druids that are cast randomly over a four second channel. This includes dots. So this is also kind of a high damage point, at least it was for us. And 
what I ended up doing was I held on to Convoke the Spirits. I think I actually ended up using it in phase one instead so that I wasn't tempted to use it in phase two. And that way I could just avoid kind of using it and risking dotting up those ads that had been CC'd. But if you, for some reason, really want to use Convoke the Spirits during phase two, what you could do instead is watch to see where those ads are CC'd and position your character so that you are far enough away from them that your dots won't reach them. I didn't want to risk it and I could just kind of shift my cooldowns around a little bit. So I just decided not to use Convoke the Spirits unless it was time to DPS those ads, because in that case, you use Convoke the Spirits and you're throwing out damaging abilities. And if it's time to kill those ads and you're also damaging them through Convoke the Spirits, then that's also really good because you're helping to kill them. The last tip that I have for Phase 3 on Heroic Huntsman Altimore is to make sure that you have enough healing cooldowns to actually get through Phase 3 because we started to fall behind a little bit on our first kill and we lost a couple of people and... I believe I had Tree of Life towards the beginning of Phase 3, and then towards the end of Phase 3, I had my Tranquility. And what ended up happening was our Resto Shaman actually died, and she ended up reincarnating just to drop a Spirit Link, and then I popped Trank, and that kind of boosted everybody up a little bit. And you just want to make sure that you have enough healing cooldowns, make sure you don't save them too far into the fight the first time you use them. You know, Convoke the Spirits has a two minute cooldown. You can use that pretty early on in the fight and then you know it's gonna be up in phase three. Same thing with Tree and Trank. I tried to use those during high damage points, but early enough in the fight that I wasn't wasting them, but that they were still beneficial for the raid so that I could count on them and use them in phase three. So just make sure that you have enough healing cooldowns to keep your raid alive and kill the boss in phase three. The next boss I want to go over is Hungering Destroyer, and this was actually one of my favorite fights to test on beta over the summer, and it can be a little bit tricky on Heroic. This was another fight that Blizzard ended up nerfing, but that we killed on Tuesday pre-nerf, so it was a little bit tricky for our raid group. What we ended up doing in terms of overall raid strategy was making four different groups out of the raid group and positioning those four groups around the boss, around the room. So we put markers down and people were assigned to each marker. That way when Miasma went out, that person with Miasma was already on a marker and already had people around them to help soak them. And basically that person with Miasma would leech health off of the people who were already on that marker with them. And then if a marker just so happened to get two Miasmas, people would use judgment and just see that, oh, that marker over there doesn't have a soak. I'm gonna go over to that marker and those players are gonna help soak and I'm gonna leech life off of them as well. For healing, the tip that I have for you is to make sure that you know very clearly on your raid frames who has miasma and who doesn't. Because if you're not tracking who has miasma, then you're just wasting heals on them because you can't actually heal them. The way that somebody gets healed when they have miasma is when people go and soak their circle because that player with miasma ends up taking health from the people around them. So on your raid frames, if you're healing and you don't actually know who has miasma and if you're a rester druid and you end up throwing hots on them or you spam regrowth a couple of times and you're like, why isn't their health going up? You're wasting mana and you're wasting hots on them because it's not going to do anything. The only way that their health can go up is if people around them help to soak their circle and they kind of leech health from those other players that means that you can then put hots on those players who are getting health leached from them if that makes sense so you can't actually put hots or heal up any any of the people who have miasma but you can help heal up the people who are giving their health away to those players with miasma the next fight that I want to go over is Artificer Zymox. And the tip that I have has to do with Edge of Annihilation. And that means that the boss throws this weapon in the middle of the room. And this weapon has a huge circle around it. And the longer this is up for, the stronger it pulls your entire raid group into the center. And if you're caught within this gigantic circle that's around it, you pretty much die. Your, your raid group is just going to die if anyone is in that circle. So how you kind of combat this mechanic is you place a portal within this weapon, this, this area of effect rather. And so that way, when the pull-in is strong enough 
and you just can't fight your way out of it. You get pulled into the weapon, there's a portal there, and the portal will port you away from the weapon circle. But the issue that I saw and the tip that I want to offer is to make sure that you really understand the timing of Edge of Annihilation. So whether that means getting a weak aura or listening to your raid leader, maybe your raid leader is going to call it out, maybe the timings of it, but my tip is to get a weak aura that has the countdown for Edge of Annihilation. Make sure you know exactly how long you have until it detonates because the pull-in will get so strong that you just, you can't fight it anymore. So what we ended up doing was we ran away from it as far as we could, as hard as we could, and then when it got to the point where it was just pulling you too much, towards the end of the weak aura, the time that Edge of Annihilation is up for, that is when you finally use the portal and it'll port you away. So it's one of those things where you're kind of, I don't know, waiting till the last couple of seconds, which might be a little bit scary, but this worked for us. It's better than waiting for four or five seconds and then using the portal and then risking getting pulled back into Edge of Annihilation at the last second right as it goes off. So my tip is please get a weak aura that has the Edge of Annihilation uh, countdown, the timer on it, and two, to really understand the timing of it and know when to take that portal in the middle of Edge of Annihilation that will port you safely away from it. The next fight I want to talk about is Sun King Salvation. And this fight is kind of weird, but also kind of interesting. We ended up seven healing this fight, which even saying that out loud sounds really outrageous, but I know another guild on my server that 10 healed it. So I guess seven isn't really that bad. But basically the general idea of this fight is that you heal Kael'thas, and when Kael'thas gets to a certain point, his shade comes out and you DPS the shade, and then the shade goes away, you heal up Kael'thas again, the shade comes out a second time and then you kill the boss. So that is the general overview of the fight. But I have a couple of tips when it comes to healing because this fight is all about healing up Kael'thas and then dealing with the shade. And what I found was that using Tree of Life and Innervate early on in the fight, and I'm talking like first 30 seconds or so, was good for our raid group because we weren't hitting a check that we were trying to hit. We needed to heal Kael'thas to a certain point and we sometimes made it, sometimes we didn't. So I realized that there wasn't really enough damage within the first minute, minute and a half of the fight that I needed to save Tree of Life for. So instead I used it almost right off the bat to heal Kael'thas and that way I could just spam all my hots into him. I had Rejuve, Life Bloom, Wild Growth, like everything you could think of and then I just spammed Regrowth on him. Shortly after this when the raid was taking quite a bit of damage I used Trank and I followed it up with Flourish. So Kael'thas also had again as many hots as I could use on him plus the Trank hot and Flourish to kind of speed everything up. You don't have to use any of these healing cooldown setups or anything like that because a lot of it will depend on the size of your raid group and what healing cooldowns you have already, how many healers you have, if you have seven, if you have less, if you have more, things like that. But I wanted to let you know some strategies that I did on this fight because we wiped on it for quite a lot and I kept shifting my cooldowns around trying to figure out the best timings to use them to make sure that we could push the boss and keep everybody alive and eventually get the kill. The next tip I have for Heroic Sun King's Salvation is when the shade comes out. So I made sure that as a healer I had Tree of Life available for this phase and that I had Convoke for this phase. I knew pretty early on during our wipes that Tranquility was not a great cooldown to use during this phase because there's so much movement. There's a lot of dodging, there are firebirds that you have to dodge and kind of keep away from the group. You have to soak and then you have to move and then you have to move out of the front hole. There's so much movement. So Convoke the Spirits, you can move that while you're channeling it. So that was a good cooldown to have. And Tree of Life, obviously you can use that on the move. Your regrowth is also instant, so that was also really good. When it comes to soaking the player mechanic, the piece of advice that I have for this is to make sure that you're pretty close to the boss when this happens, because right after this goes off, you immediately need to start moving forward so that you're not staying in fire. The fire does quite a bit of damage. If you stand in it for even just a few ticks, you're probably going to die. So you soak it and then you immediately move forward. 
However, the issue that we were running into was that the boss does a frontal cone ability right after the soak mechanic. So you wanna make sure that you're pretty close to the boss so that you can either sidestep around his back as he's casting the frontal so that you're not walking in front of the cone. It helped us to be close to the boss and sidestep around his back as he's casting it and that way you're not kind of far away from the boss, you're not trying to walk in front of him or through the middle of the frontal and risking getting clipped by it. And the last information that I want to give you about this fight is that for our raid group, we ended up having a holy priest and a mistweaver monk pick up the orbs that the infusers drop, and they use these orbs to basically spam single target heal Kael'thas up. So depending on what your healing comp looks like, if you have a Mistweaver Monk and a Holy Priest, that is viable. They are able to pick up those orbs and do a lot of single target healing. I hope these tips and advice helps you and your raid group. Castle Nathria has been amazing. It's been so challenging in such a good way. And it's challenging on normal, it's challenging on heroic, and it won't be like that forever. Eventually, all of us will start to get gear. Our item level will go up, we'll get more stamina, our hots and our healing will increase your DPS damage will increase, so it will get easier. But during these first couple weeks, I really do hope that some of these tips and that this advice helps you guys get these kills and so that you can get loot and continue on in Castle Nathria. Worry about Niklaus, see if we can get him. Almost, kill the tenant, kill the tenant, and then he's dead. Kill the tenant, and then he's dead. Karina Kishun died. Kill Niklaus. Nice.